Hey guys and welcome back to Biolog. Hope you are having a great day and a great week. Now, today's video is going to look at the toughest IGCC biology paper, six questions. So make sure you stay till the end for my biggest tip on this paper and pay attention to the specific details that I'm going to put up for you guys. And without further ado, let's begin. A student investigated the effect of different concentrations of salt solution on a hollow plant stem. They were provided with 2% salt solution and distilled water. The student used these to make up different uh, concentrations of salt solution and the four test tubes were labeled 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now the information in the table 1.1 was used to make up these four different salt solutions in the test tube. Alright, so let us look at the information given. What they're asking you is find the percentage concentration of salt solution in test tube 2. Okay, so in test tube 2, uh, you have to find the final percentage concentration. So how do we do that? We know that the final percentage concentration needs to be uh, in terms of a trend, right? So what you're going to look at is actually the trend here. So whenever you have plus uh, 5 actually, or let's say into 2 this from here onwards it is into 2 into 2 right multiplied by 2 that is the trend you're seeing when you come to volume of distilled water here everything decreases by 5 each time so if you take these two relations and you compare it to the last column which is the final percentage of salt solution you will now check from here okay these two ones when you either double the volume of 2% salt solution or you minus 5 the volume of distilled water you will actually get double the percentage salt solution in the final one. So this would mean that the previous one is actually half, right? Because if the next one is double, the previous one is half. So this value is actually supposed to be half of one and that is 0.5. So this value here is 0.5. So always make sure in these kind of table calculation questions, you're finding a trend. Okay, make sure you find a pattern and then, uh, you know, use your answer or then write your answer based on that. Because most of the times it's very simple patterns. You just have to find the pattern. Like, for example, into, or, you know, multiplication or division. It's these kind of simple patterns that will be very evident. And you just have to find that and uh, calculate on the basis of that pattern. All right. So let's move on to the next one now. The contents of each test tube are now poured into four different petri dishes, uh, one, two, three, and four. And a hollow stem was cut into 12 rings using a sharp scalpel. Each stem ring was approximately 2 millimeters long. So as you can see, it was approximately 2 millimeters long. So we're assuming that it's equal length. Now each stem ring was cut open to show this. The three stem rings were put into different salt solutions in the petri dish and left for 10 minutes. All right, now what is the question? Now this shows the appearance of the stem rings after 10 minutes. Now, the Petri dish 1 has 3, Petri dish 2 has 3, uh, Petri dish 3 has 3, and 4 has full rings. Alright. Now, the distance between the two cut ends of the stem can be measured as shown in this. In this example, the distance is 12 millimeter. Now, as for the table, so you have to uh, make sure that you're reading the instructions given to you very carefully. So firstly, it says measure the gap between the cut ends of the stem rings shown in the figure. So what you're going to do is, as the instructions are mentioned, measure each one using your ruler, all right? And it has to always be from one tip to the other tip in a straight line. So it should be like this for this one or like this for this. So Remember that it has to be in a straight line and it has to be done using your ruler. If you don't do it using your ruler, you will lose marks. All right. And follow the exact way that they have done here. This is how you are supposed to measure it. All right. Now you're going to plot those values in the form of a table. Right? You're going to put it in the table. Now you should show all of your results. All right. Show all of your results in the calculated average for each solution. How do you plot or how do you create a table? I know this is quite difficult, but really it does depend on the question. So here in this case, they have given you what? They have given you four Petri dishes, all right? So we already know that there are four uh, sort of, you know, lines or you could say four uh, columns, I would say. You could do that. Either you could do four columns and three rows or you could do three columns and four rows, all right? 
that anything should be okay because again i don't think it changes the uh, you know table as such i mean it should be accepted preferably i would say that they will uh, prefer three columns because in this case you will just have if you do three columns uh, you will just have one header and you would have uh, three columns right here one two three and you will have four rows one two three four whereas in my case what i have done is i have actually done it a little bit different yet this still is correct here what i have done is i have taken four columns and three rows all right to make it simpler so petri dish one it goes horizontally so petri dish one two three and four the solve solution under each one is 0 0.0 0 0.5 1 and 2.0 now it's very important to include the decimal always check the decimal places if there are one decimal place if there's one decimal place in every single value that's given make sure you write the one decimal place in the table as well otherwise out of four you will only get three so make sure that you're doing that and the second thing is to always only write the units inside the header column so this i would consider this as a header column and I would consider the rest as my individual sections, all right? So when I say header column, I mean this part, right? So when we are talking about this, always put the centimeter or the, uh, you know, centimeter cube type of unit in the header and not in these sections, which is the uh, actual like space where you put your uh, values, all right? So you have these four values for each one, you will uh, plot them and you'll put them in your table that you can measure uh, using the instructions given over here just measure the length using your ruler and you will be able to find the values for average we know that it is all of the values combined so the values total the values total divided by the number of values is what gives us the average all right this is something that you just need to know an average is the total of all of the values divided by the number of values so over here, the total of the values for each section should be calculated x, y, and z, for example. So it will be x plus y plus z divided by 3 because x, y, and z, totally there are three values, right? So that's how you do the average. Now, when you're going to describe what you have gotten from your table, always make sure again to look at the trend, all right? For example, if we take the values over here, all right, so you have, uh, this one was actually coming to about 2.7. This was coming to about 3.2. When we look here, Petri Dish 3 has, uh, again, lower values compared to this one. And Petri Dish 6 has, again, lower values compared to that. So, when we look at the table now, let us try to find a relation, all right? So, using the table, we can see that as the salt uh, solution increases, the gap or the distance over here keeps decreasing right because in petri dish 1 to petri dish 2 petri dish 2 or petri dish 3 has a higher salt uh, concentration salt solution concentration is higher in 2 and 3 compared to 1 and the width of this ring over here the width of the ring also is lesser in petri dish 2 and 3 this would mean that the relation is as the salt concentration increases like in two and three the gap between the ends of the ring decreases so the length of the gap between the end of the rings decreases so smaller the gap you could say so how would you frame your answer in this case you would have to mention that higher the salt solution concentration higher the salt solution concentration smaller the gap all right higher the salt solution concentration smaller the gap or smaller the length between the ends of the ring you can say any of them that shouldn't really matter as long as you uh, frame it correctly you're good moving on to the next question now this is uh, one of those questions that i had not seen before when i was doing these papers uh, this was a pretty unique type of question because definitely something like renin enzymes like renin were not common like the most common type of question i knew in paper six was the catalase one based on uh, catalase giving uh, hydrogen peroxide and water but this type of question was really really unique and so this is why i want you guys to pay attention to these types of papers because they are they actually have the probably the most trickiest questions in paper six and you know other types of papers as well 
So let's get right on to it. Young mammals feed on milk containing protein. Some mammals produce an enzyme called renin. The renin changes the protein in milk so that it can be digested by another enzyme. Now the action of renin causes small lumps or clots to form in the milk. That is the main idea of the entire experiment. An investigation was carried out to find the effect of pH on the activity of the enzyme renin. There were three test tubes, P, Q and R. The syringe was used to add 5 cm cube of milk to each of these. Dropping pipette was used to do so, uh, which was acid basically. And dropping pipette was used to do uh, distilled water as well in Q. So remember P had acid, Q had water and R had alkali. So that is pretty important. Another three test tubes were labeled P1, Q1 and R1. A clean syringe was used to add renin solution to Q, P1, Q1 and R1. And all of them were placed at 40, centimeter, uh, 40 degree Celsius water bath. Now this idea of placing all of the test tubes in water baths is important because you need to have all of the temperatures being thermostatically controlled. The word thermostat thermostatically controlled is actually an examiner favorite, I would say. They uh, kind of like that you know, you're know you using the correct terminology and so it does give a pretty good impression on the examiner if you use this in your answer. So always make sure whenever you're talking about a water bath in paper six experiments and they ask you what is something that you can control, you can control temperature, right? In most of the cases, unless the main focus is on uh, changing temperature, the other factor that can be controlled is temperature. And to control it, you will use a thermostatically controlled water bath at a specific temperature. All right. So that word thermostatically controlled is very important. Now the test tubes. Uh, P, Q and R were kept in the water bath and the clock, uh, stop clock was started. So he, over here the uh, contents of P were added to, P1 were added to P, Q1 was added to Q, R1 was added to R. After one minute the test tube, sorry, after one minute the test tube P was removed from the water bath. It was tipped and rotated as shown over here and the appearance of the milk was observed and it was compared with the other diagrams. Milk drains back smoothly from the side of the test tube in A. In B, small clots were formed, that is important. And in the C, most of the milk was solid, which means a lot of clotting happened in C and some clotting happened in B. So what was the difference between A, B and C? All right. A contained. Uh, all right. So these were, these were just stages. OK, let's continue reading. Uh, the test tube P was returned to the water baths. Uh, the steps 11 and 12 were repeated for Q and R. 11, 12 and 13 were repeated for five minutes every minute. So P had some clotting at one minute and all was clotted at two minutes. The test tube Q had no clotting at one, two or three minutes, but some clotting at four and five minutes. And R had no clotting throughout the investigation. So that is quite important. All right. Now, the difference between P, Q and R. Yeah, this is what I wanted to say. So the difference between P, Q and R was that P had acid, Q had water and R had alkali. So remember this had acid, this had water and this had alkali. So if there was no clotting in R, the alkali actually does not have an effect on clotting necessarily. Or you could say that because it had, right, right. It only had um, alkali. So R only had alkali, P only had acid and Q only had water. These are some of the pretty important tests you guys should know for paper 6. So make sure you take a screenshot and learn these tests thoroughly. For graphs, I have created a separate video for this, which you guys can check out here. I think the link will be somewhere here. But to summarize for graphs, you will need the axis. Obviously, you will have a Y axis. You will have an X axis. On the Y axis, you will have the dependent variable. The dependent variable is something you are measuring. But on the x axis, you will have the independent variable and the independent variable is something you are controlling, something you are changing. Now, to make sure that you know what goes where, this is a very good mnemonic. Always use dry mix. Yeah, dry mix where dry, the D is for dependent variable. So dependent variable on y axis and the independent variable I x on the x axis, independent variable on the x axis. Now. Let's move on to the next one. State two variables that were kept constant in this investigation. All right. So we already talked about this one temperature, right? We know temperature has to be constant so that it does not affect the dependent variable, does not affect the results. So that's one of the variables that is kept constant temperature. 
okay you can be more specific if you like and say 40 degrees celsius now the second one that was kept constant um, we know that in this case the concentration of the enzyme let's just check that uh, all right so now in the clean yeah this look at this one seven step seven a clean syringe was used to add one centimeter cube of 0.1 percent renin solution which is the enzyme right renin was the enzyme to each test tube p1 q1 r1 so you can either say the volume of the renin solution the volume of the enzyme or the concentration of the enzyme which was 0.1 anything is okay so it's either the volume of the renin solution or the concentration of the renin solution so let's just write one volume of the renin solution or enzyme okay you can either say enzyme or renin solution and if you want to be specific you can say one centimeter cube as given in the data above now error is extremely important in paper six typically every single paper six question will ask you to identify the error all right so when we look at the errors in this case let's go back to the experiment what could be the possible errors now something i definitely can see yeah, the better one yeah the better one i would say is that again over here remember two drops of acid remember that drop sizes can actually be different right the even though the volume is the same the sizes can be different in certain cases and that actually could change the volume even though you're adding two drops you intend to add the same volume but the, the size of the drops can be different and that can change the volume right so that is one so the first thing is the drop size all right the second one let us check the second one could possibly also be that uh right so it actually says after one minute it was tipped and rotated and the appearance was judged or the appearance was seen remember that even having no repeats if you do not repeat your experiment there is a possible source of error right because there is no accuracy if you do not repeat your experiment how are you going to know that your results are reliable your results are valid so because of lack of accuracy because you're not repeating the experiment it could be a possible source of error so not repeating the experiments so no repeats can be another possible source of error all right now the next one is actually you could because now again look at this the clotting the clotting is again something quite subjective right you uh, don't exactly i mean it, it can be seen from different angles is what i'm trying to say so when you look at clotting in some cases you might actually see some clots but if it was in other conditions you might not be able to see clots so it, this actually varies from person to person right there is a subjective nature of deciding when the thing starts to clot all right it can start to form small small uh, bubbles or small small dots but then if you don't recognize that as clotting then that obviously will affect your results that will affect your experiment so the third possible source of error could be the subjective nature of finding out the clotting point all right so the clotting point can be another one all right moving on to the uh, next one uh, let's think of the fourth one right because they asked us for four errors so remember that in this case oh yes this is a very pretty important one look at this a dropping pipette was used to add this a dropping pipette was used to add distilled water a dropping pipette was used to add alkali this actually kind of gives the impression that the dropping pipette has been used again and again and again for the acid for the distilled water and for the alkali and so because of this you're using the same dropping paper for everything right it could definitely lead to contamination where in the places that you do not want acid or do not want alkali you could have possibly poured some alkali or you could have possibly poured some water instead that could have changed the concentration of the renin all right so that is pretty important and last one so the last one would be the fact that uh, you know you're using the same dropping pipette for everything so this could lead to contamination all right so let us actually write that down in the place so four sources of error all right number one could be contamination because you're using the same dropping pipette i'll just write it in points you're using the same dropping pipette make sure you write it in full sentences all right i'm just doing this for convenience so that you guys can understand the second one is that there were no repeats right there were no repeats that were done on this experiment and that could be a possible source of error the drops of the acid or the alkali the drops of the 
acid the alkali or the water could be different all right they could be different the next one which is actually the last one could be that there's a subjective nature of deciding when the uh, content start to clot all right subjective nature of deciding the clotting point moving on to the next one identify one hazard associated with the procedures i would use the eye protection a very specific all right and one hazard always in uh, paper 6 questions they will ask you for a precaution a safety measure and this is that type of question so remember in this case you're using acid right now acid can actually easily some of the acids can vaporize all right they can actually cause fumes so they can cause vapors to come out and if they come in contact with your eye it can cause uh, burns or it can cause damage so a uh, safety hazard would be the uh, presence of the acid you can say either acid only or you just better to say presence of the acid and so the safety uh, equipment that you would use would be safety goggles all right would be safety goggles you don't have to mention this because remember the question is only asking you for one hazard it's not asking you for the precaution itself next thing for drawings there are few things again you need to follow first of all being draw single lines all right always do single lines the length of the drawing or the size of the drawing should be very large it should be at least 3/4 of the space given to you in your exam paper third thing no shading at all in igcsc you do not shade diagrams make sure it is the correct proportion there should be no feathering no shading as in no uh, multiple lines just single lines it should be neat it should be crisp lines no eraser marks as well that'll be it for this video guys i hope you liked it if you did do make sure to like share and subscribe to biolog we are so so close to 500 subscribers guys it's crazy Thank you thank you so so much for all your support and all of your comments the positive comments that I've been getting from you guys I really hope you guys have a great rest of the week and a really good day and I will see you guys in my next video have a great day